It's January, and that means high school basketball takes center stage right here on the Cox Sports Report. We welcome you to the first episode for the calendar year of 2016. I am Matthew Hatfield, and we'll start things off in Richmond for the 8th Annual VirginiaPreps.com Basketball Classic presented by Cox Sports. The LC Bird Skyhawks taking on the Bethel Bruins. Bethel coming in with a record of 8-3 on a six-game winning streak, while LC Bird is undefeated. Eight wins, no losses, a jam-packed crowd and atmosphere at J.R. Tucker High School. And early on, it's Bethel's Jeremiah Owusu working hard inside. If he doesn't finish, they have the 6'11 rim protector getting it done on both ends of the floor. That's Dejour Dickens looking to muscle his way in for two as Bethel starts out with an 8-0 lead. You see Owusu putting it on the floor, hitting the mid-range jumper. L.C. Burger, they have some speedy guards and they can counter in a hurry. There inside it is Giles Webster with the offensive stick back. But Bethel has the big man. That's Dejour Dickens with the flush there as the Bruins not rattle at all going on the road. Three-point shot is money for Miles Barrett. And after one quarter of play, it's Bethel 15, L.C. Bird 4. Bethel having the cheerleaders make the trip there. All excited about their team in the lead. Charles Falden trying to bring his Skyhawks back. And now the defense getting in on the act as it's Cameron Henry with the steal and the layup. The Skyhawks cutting into that Bethel lead. Now a poke away here as the Bethel defense creating some instant offense as it's Justin Ned poking away Jeremiah Owusu with the layup. Troy Mann's trying to rally the troops of L.C. Bird and there is Joaquin Pinky Wiley for three. L.C. Bird now inside as the basket goes off the glass for Cam Henry. Bethel though with that three point shooting attack you have to watch out for Kyle Foster as he extends the lead to 18 for Bethel trying to knock off undefeated L.C. Bird. Charles Fulton inside for two, and now Giles Webster will get it to go as the Skyhawks are not going to quit undefeated for a reason, but Bethel is determined behind Dejour Dickens. Another flush inside L.C. Bird. The layup is good for Giles Webster. Bethel getting a lot of paint points, and there's Jeremiah Owusu with a jam as Bethel up 18 going to the second half. A bit of a surprise here. Mario Haskett with one of his few makes, the junior guard being recruited by ACC schools. Kyle Foster, though, coming right back with one of his five three-point makes for Bethel. Webster inside for L.C. Bird as the Skyhawks would make a rally in the third quarter, get it down to about eight. There's Taki Williams for two. Bethel, though, getting the points in transition as Cam Baycoat finds Dejour Dickens for the jam, and then Foster left open for three. You better get somebody on that guy because he will make you pay. Falden with the turnaround jumper as Bird coming right back with some offense. The tap back from Taki Williams as Bethel is going to have to hang on here for dear life as L.C. Bird making a rally now. The crowd getting into it, an 11-point game as that lead is starting to shrink going to the fourth period. Wiley with the long-range jumper. It is money. Now Haskett with the pull-up basket. It is good as L.C. Bird is getting closer. Bethel, though, they have the inside power behind Owusu and Dejour Dickens with the jam. Wiley with the step-back jumper. It's in. But Foster again connecting from long range as he had 21 points in this game. Wiley with a deep three. It is good. Both teams exchanging big punches here. And there's Owusu with one of his several jams on the game for Bethel, the hustle guy, the heart guy. And now it is Giles Webster with the stick back. Elsie Bird getting in the lane in the second half, but they created too big of a deficit there as Webster gets it to go. And the Bruins would take care of business at the foul line to hold on for a 71-58 win in the Virginia Preps Classic. You see Foster, Dickens, and Owusu combining between the three of them for 55 points. L.C. Bird led by Giles Webster's 14. Charles Falden chipped in 12. More scores from the Virginia Preps Classic in Richmond. It was Nansman River winning in overtime over J.R. Tucker 62-51. They outscored the Tigers 11-0 in overtime as Josh Covington and Josh Hale combined for 31 points and 10 steals. John Marshall also an overtime winner over Blue Ridge 70 to 69. Greg Jones the MVP there with 20 points, 10 rebounds and six block shots to lead the Justices. Another game to check in on from the Virginia Preps Classic, the eighth annual presented by Cox Sports in Richmond. The undefeated Henrico Warriors at 13 and 0, riding a 31 game winning streak, taking on the Lake Taylor Titans out of Norfolk at eight and two, ranked number one in the state in the preseason in 4A and Travia Smith Gets Lake Taylor on the board first. He is the long, lanky, athletic wing for Lake Taylor. Henrico countering with some inside punch there. As you see, they get to the basket with Gus Rowland, DeMonte Buckingham, and a slew of guys, the defending state champs. Ahmad Elliott would be the catalyst for Lake Taylor's offense. He led them all game long offensively, but DeMonte Buckingham, the future Richmond Spider, 
connecting from deep. And then Travia Smith says, get that out of here, a block. You see why he is a coveted player for the next level. Jalen Jordan with the mid-range jumper. And Lake Taylor weathering the storm early and actually taking the lead as Emmanuel Cuffey knocks down a three-pointer. But back comes Henrico with some defense. You see Richard Sanders with a block shot. And that would lead to an offensive opportunity for Sanders as he gets the put back on Buckingham's miss. Back and forth they go. Lake Taylor up one, heading to the second quarter. Darion Sabron, the Norcom transfer for two. Sanders comes right back with a long-range jumper, and Henrico retakes the lead. A steal from Roland, and that will lead to a Buckingham dunk as Henrico gets the lead there. And a three-point shot is no good for the Warriors, but the offensive rebounding critical for both teams as Jamal Foy gets the stick back there, and then Buckingham with a chance to score inside. Lake Tittle would get some threes to fall, though. Elliott with one of their five three-point makes in the game. Gus Rowland would not get the foul call here. It's a turnover, and that leads to a steal for Jordan. And Elliott with the pull-up jumper. It is in as the Titans going on the road, showing their mettle, their toughness here. They get a transition basket again from Elliott as Lake Taylor has deadlocked Henrico at 29 apiece, going to the second half. They take the lead early as Elliott connects from long distance. Buckingham says right back at you as he hits the three-pointer. Travis's three is off, but right there is Jalen Jordan with the recovery and the score. Block shot again from Richard Sanders. Did you see the long, the length there for Henrico having an effect? Put back is there for Lake Taylor's Darion Sebron as the Titans are trying to pull off a signature win for them. And Smith with the gorgeous spin move and dump off to Cuffey. Then it's a three-pointer no good, but offensive rebounding. 24 offensive boards for Lake Taylor. Smith with a putback and Sabron with a three-pointer as Lake Taylor trying to end the long winning streak. But there's Richard Sanders coming back with the jam. 43 to 40, can the Titans hang on going to the final stanza? Now Gus Rowland with a steal. Cuffey swipes it right back. Oh, it's on the ball. Hot potato, hot potato. Who's got it? Henrico's got it. There's Buckingham with a move down the lane. Get it and draws the foul. Three-point opportunity. Left wide open, though, is Ahmad Elliott. He's the guy you want to cover right now because he's got the hot hand. And then it's Smith to Sebron. Lake Taylor goes up as many as seven. Henrico's on a 32-game winning streak and defending champs for a reason, though. As Sanders gets the put back, rolling with the layup to tie it. 51 all with under two minutes to go. And there's Jamal Newton with the steal and score. Henrico goes up two. Lake Taylor, Joe Bryant for three, and the Titans go up one. DeMonte Buckingham, jumper with 20 seconds to go, and Henrico takes a one-point lead. Final play, eight seconds left. Bryant throws it up, no good. Rebound Buckingham, and the Warriors survive, extending their win streak to 32 games as they beat Lake Taylor behind Buckingham's double-double of 17 points, 12 rebounds. Sanders had 16 points and six rebounds, while Elliott led the Titans with 18 points and six boards. More results from the Virginia Preps Classic in Richmond, it was Albemarle holding off Orion a 54 to 53 as Austin Katstra had the game winning basket on a jam at the buzzer. 19 points, nine rebounds, six blocks for Katstra as the Patriots hold off the Blue Devils. And Williamsburg Christian victorious over James Monroe, 79 to 65. It was Xavier Green with 23 points, 12 rebounds, four assists and four blocks, picking up the MVP trophy, the Old Dominion recruit. The other green, Clavon Green, no relation with 19 points, 5 of 5 from three-point distance for Williamsburg Christian. Well, stick around. We've got more highlights right here, including Norcom taking on Atlantic Shores in a public school versus private school matchup, plus Hidden Valley and Northside in girls' basketball action. Stay tuned. You're watching the Cox Sports Report. Welcome back to Sports Report. We now head to Portsmouth as the defending state champion Norcom Greyhounds trying to three-peat this year. Coach Leon Goolsby approaching a milestone, but to get it, they'll have to beat the Atlantic Shore Seahawks, coached by Mike Hudgens. A team on the rise, which is looking for that signature win and a chance to get it on the road and spoil Norcom's undefeated run. Norcom coming in with a 21-game winning streak for this contest, and early on it'll be Atlantic Shores leaning on the plays of Mastani Pitt, the Hampton transfer, coming in as the Penn South Conference Player of the Year a season ago. He's off the mark there, but Travis Fields, the Norcom point guard, will cash it in to get the Greyhounds out to an early 8-3 lead. Now Atlantic Shores looking to use that perimeter attack to chip into that lead, and there's Pitt there driving in the paint and gets it to go. Great body control from Mastani there. And now you see the dish inside to Christian Kimbrough, the 6'5 senior, finishing it off 
for Atlantic Shores. Now Pitt at the controls, operating against that tough Norcom defense. He'll hand it off there. There's Marvin Trotman dip, dumping it off inside to Kimbrough again. It's deadlocked at 12 early in the second period. Now Travis Fields from three-point land, no good, but there's K.J. Davis using that six-foot-six long wingspan of his to get the putback for Norcom. He was an All-State performer a season ago. Now Davis in the lane now, putting it on the deck and getting to the hoop for two. Fans in the front row enjoying the action here as this is a good public school, private school showdown. Three-point land for Giantaris Bartoskis on the feed from Pitt. Norcom coming right back with a chance from three. No good. There's Bartoskis throwing it up ahead. The layup is good for Atlantic Shores there as they score it with Byron Nelson. 29-28 Shores in the lead late in the first half. As time ticks down, Pitt from way downtown hitting the three-pointer, and he salutes everybody in Portsmouth as Atlantic Shores has the lead at intermission, 32-30. Second half action now. K.J. Davis, Travis Fields, Travis Ingram. It's a deadly perimeter trio, and there's one of those guys striking Fields from three-point range as Norcom goes back in front. And Fields, look at the shiftiness and gears he has. He can turn there on a dime. No good, and that will lead to Atlantic Shore to the run out as Jordan Kennedy scores on the other end. Norcom, though, they will play fast and loose all game long as they get it inside. Again, there's Tommy Pope cashing in. 37-36, nip and tuck the entire second half. K.J. Davis off the mark here. Atlantic Shores with the rebound, but they lose it there as that Norcom defense is getting after it. Saquon Clark comes up with a loose ball. Travis Ingram now has it. He finds Davis for three. No good rebound for Fields, who's Johnny on the spot, and gets it to swish home. Greyhounds trying to keep that winning streak going, but Atlantic Shores has other ideas. As you see, getting in the lane there is Nelson. He kicks it out for a three-pointer off the mark for Atlantic Shores, but there's the offensive rebounding paying off as they find Logan Wells inside on the feed from Kennedy. Logan Wells, he can score it inside, and he's also got the touch and range from deep two as he gets that one. Leon Goolsby trying to get career win number 200 in his tenure at Norcom High School. As his team's in a deficit in the third quarter, can they rally behind K.J. Davis? They might. He hits a three-pointer, and now another three-pointer is good there for Norcom. Tommy Pope getting it to go. And now inside it'll be a steal for Norcom. And when they get steals, it leads to layups. Travis Fields with the easy basket. Norcom back in the lead, 62-55, as Goolsby is drawing up everything on that whiteboard. He's got the dry erase marker. He's ready to go. There's Atlantic Shorts at the hoop. Can't get it to go. And the Greyhounds rally in the second half for a 71-60 win. They're now 13-0, 22 consecutive for the Greyhounds. And kudos to Coach Goolsby on win number 200. Travis Fields led the way with 27 points. Five boards, five assists. Davis had a double-double as well with 15 points and 10 rebounds. Now some girls basketball action here on Sports Report. We check out Hidden Valley against Northside. Hidden Valley in the white, Northside in the green. It's a non-district matchup between these two schools out of the River Ridge and Blue Ridge districts. And early on, it'll be Hidden Valley's Haley Singleton finding Samia Garay inside for two. Hidden Valley with only one loss on the year as they look to be a contender playing into March. As you see the transition game working there for Hidden Valley. Now they get the ball inside. It'll be no good and they're getting the rebound for Northside as junior Alexis Weston. Remember that name because she is a factor for Northside. She takes it coast to coast and gets it to go. Look at the Vikings. Leaning on Weston here, this time it won't go, and now Hidden Valley with their guards trying to get control back here and hold off Northside in this matchup. You see them swinging the ball, and the ball movement very key for this team as the jumper is in for Drew Freeland. She would be the main scorer in this game. Block shot from Weston, and now Northside with a layup opportunity. It's Sydney Smith getting it to go off the window. First quarter action, 13 all through one period of play. Second quarter, Northside having to like what they've done defensively thus far, but Hidden Valley, a very patient, deliberate team that has no problem when it's tied or trailing. As you see, the jumper is cashed in for Drew Freeland. They're attacking that 2-3 zone very effectively. Another jumper is in there as Singleton and Freeland would be the offensive spark plugs for Hidden Valley as they operate against Weston inside. They get the ball inside to Sania Garay for two underneath. Now Northside trying to find someone other than Weston to get their offense going as Hidden Valley trying to deny her. And you see there they intercept the pass right in front of Weston. And turnovers can sometimes lead, sometimes lead to easy basket as the three-pointer in the corner is good. Ring it up, 38-20 to 20 at the break. Hidden Valley up by almost 20. 
and that defense is starting to rev up now. You're seeing more full court pressure and trapping at a Hidden Valley north side trying to counter it with some quick baskets, but you see that aggressiveness on defense as it's another steal here for Freeland, the five foot eight junior captain who gets it to fall. Weston now top of the key, putting it on the deck and gets to the hoop for two. Showing off her versatility of playing inside and out. Now Hidden Valley with the turnover here as the north side defense is getting after it, but Hidden Valley swipes it right back and the jumper is good for Freeland, who is scoring from all over the floor in this one. Weston now, foul line jumper, it's in. As Weston keeping north side within striking distance potentially, but they need some stops. Down the lane goes Joan Booker, along with Smith and Weston, three of the main keys, key ingredients for north side. 54 to 32, Hidden Valley trying to pull away and you see that defense really giving Northside problems inside, not getting those easy paint points that they're accustomed to with Weston. Hidden Valley now with a quick transition opportunity as you see the laser pass up ahead. Freeland, they share the basketball so well. Ashley Sweet with the basket there. Such great unselfishness for Hidden Valley playing in front of the home fans there as the Titans are loving it. Northside now down by a lot here, trying to get some subs in the game down the stretch, but you see Booker going to continue to battle hard, 68 to 39, Hidden Valley with the victory. As you see, Freeland had 28 points, six rebounds, five assists, and four steals. Sania Guerrero also filled the stat sheet with 12 points, 10 assists, eight rebounds, five steals. I think she sold popcorn too. When we come back, we'll have a girls boys doubleheader in Norfolk as Green Run takes on Maury. Don't go anywhere, you're watching the Cox Sports Report. And welcome back to the Cox Sports Report. It's now time for a girls boys basketball doubleheader. A double dip in Norfolk as the Maury Commodores play host to the Green Run Stallions. A couple of teams jockeying for positioning in the Atlantic Conference 9 race before the tournament starts in February. And of course, Princess Anne has been the king, or should we say queen, of girls basketball in Conference 9. But early on, it's Green Run Sania Hankins with the layup here against Maury, who actually beat Princess Anne a couple of times a season ago. Green Run with the first basket on the road. And now trying to get Alexis Warner to lead their offense here and create something. It's inside to Tabian Flowers, and she finds Nina Robinson off the mark, though. But Kibra Hopkins gets the put back for Green Run. Off to a surprising start here as Green Run against that attacking Maury defense likes to double. Another layup is good for Hopkins. And the Stallions surprising Maury just a bit. Seven to nothing. They have a touchdown lead in girls' hoops late in the first quarter in Norfolk at Maury High. Now Green Run against that Maury defense. Oh, they're going to turn up the pressure on you in a hurry. You better watch out. There's the Commodores' Asia Deal, a backup last year, taking on a bigger role this season. Maury with a quick 8-0 run. If you blinked, you missed it early in the second quarter. As you see Green Run trying to respond here, and they go to their go-to player. It's Nina Robinson inside for the deuce. Maury coming right back, though, as you see, they're starting to really get aggressive defensively. A steal there, and then it's Deal finding Deja Riddick for two. It's going to be Deja Riddick finding Deal for two. 15 to 11, late in the second quarter. Green Run still hanging in there close against this Maury team, playing some zone defense under first-year coach Allen Jones. And when you see the zone, you've got to cash in from three. That time it's no good, but the putback is from Maury. Give it to Alicia Cooper. 20 to 15 early in the third quarter in a defensive battle. Now Maury getting those transition opportunities that they're so good with. Kashana Sutton with the layup, and Kashana Sutton, another player taking on a bigger role with Shanette Hicks gone, and G Gianna Smith no longer there, and the Stiss sisters not playing this season. Sutton becomes one of the focal points for Coach Jennifer Parker. A nine point lead for Maury. Remember, they trailed by seven in the first quarter. Green Run looking to come back. And the one that will lead them there is Nina Robinson, a potential all-conference candidate for Coach Jones and the Stallions. Seven-point lead for Maury late in the third quarter, and that fast break game is starting to take effect. There's Deja Riddick. Just too many easy baskets for Maury for Green Run to hang in there. Now a 13-point deficit for the Stallions. We got off to a great spirited start. Now Maury here working it with Kishana Sutton. As you see, they find some room inside, extra pass, and working to perfection there as Taylor Day gets it from Deal. Deal is dealing out assists all game long in this one, 38 to 23. And just send two defenders her way. She'll often find the open player, and she finds her teammate inside there. That's Carlisha Harden for the basket. 
as Maury beginning to pull away in the fourth period, up 19 with less than three minutes to go. And early they had nine personal fouls. You're seeing less fouling from Maury with that aggressive defense. And there the floater is wet for Taylor Day. 25 point lead as they've doubled up Green Run with under a minute to play. The Stallions now going back inside in the post to Nina Robinson. Down low in the low block, she is a factor. She scores it there with the sweeping move. But Maury is going to pull it out 50 to 27 as the Commodores keep pace in that Atlantic Conference 9 race with the favorites, Princess Inn. You also got Salem, who's a factor as well. Kashana Sutton and Deja Riddick combining for 26 points. Nina Robinson led the way for Green Run with 11 points, but 28 turnovers, just too many to defeat the Maury Commodores. Can the Maury Commodores boys also win? They've got to take on the undefeated Green Run Stallions, who come in ranked number two in the state in 5A. 11 wins, no losses. Maury checking in at 9-3, and, and right out of the gate, it's the lob to Sean Wade finding Amani Wood for the basket there for Coach Kenneth Harris' Stallions. Maury coming right back. Jack Baker, the longtime coach, over 700 wins. He's got an inexperienced team with two freshman guards. There's one of them, though, Brian Phillips with a nifty maneuver in the lane. Green run with a 6-5 lead early in the first quarter. Now Maury trying to keep up with three-point shooting because Green run has some really good length inside. They missed the three, but Brian Phillips is there with the offensive putback. 10 to seven, Stallions up by three late in the first. And there's Phillips going to the basket. He scored the first nine points for the Commodores. This is a ninth grader to watch out for, also playing alongside Chase Coleman, a freshman and younger brother of Matt Coleman, the highly recruited guard from Oak Hill. Now Green Run getting some three-point shots here. That one will be off the mark, but Sterling Carrington, the guy who can clean up with the putback, Sterling coming in averaging about 15 rebounds per game for Green Run, and they lead by a slim margin of 16 to 13 early in the second quarter. Najon Nobles attacking off the dribble, and he scores it. Najon stepping into a starting role when second team All-State guard Deshaun Wade got hurt earlier this season, now coming back off the bench. And Maury working the ball around here against that trapping defense of Green Run. Anthony Williams, the two sports standout, with some offers on the table from VMI and Virginia State in football. Helping out Maury here. He had a double-double in this one. 18 to 15, and Maury tying it up on Chase Coleman's three-pointer in the corner. So the Commodores hanging tough, but Green Run now with a seven-point lead late in the second quarter as they would create some points off of turnovers. Three-pointer for one of the Stoner brothers. That is Daniel Stoner, one of the brothers for Maury. Also, Michael Stoner, a player that starts for Jack Baker in the lineup. 27-24, Green Run with the lead. Now you see getting a little sloppy with the basketball, the Stallions are, and Brian Phillips with the steal and scores it as the Commodores cut into that green run lead. But it's 34-27. Every time Maury gets close, green run answers, and they respond again here. They miss it, but they attack it at the glass. And another offensive opportunity for green run as they get so many offensive rebounds as Carrington cashes it in there with the jumper. 16 offensive boards for green run in this one and a nine point lead for Green Run late in the third quarter. Maury trying to come back at home. It's Coleman getting fouled on a three pointer and he makes it. So an opportunity for a rare four point play. He gets it to fall, but Green Run up by 10 still in the fourth period. Every time Maury gets close, Green Run increases the lead. Coleman with a tough move there getting to the basket to shrink it to eight for Green Run. Fourth quarter action, Anthony Williams driving and kicking it out. Three-pointer is good for Sharif Ford. Another one of the underclassmen for Jack Baker's bunch. 54-46 green run, comfortably in front by eight late in the fourth quarter. As you see, Justin Barnett now gets in the lane and gets the basket to go. Stallions have won every game this season by seven points or more, and they continue that trend. 61 to 49. Some big games looming for Green Run, including against Conference Foe Norview, as well as Paul the Six in the Virginia Preps Classic at Green Run High School. You see Carrington with 15 points, 16 rebounds, three blocks. Damon Showers and Najon Nobles with 11 points apiece as Green Run prevails to stay undefeated. Well, that will do it for this edition of the Cox Sports Report. We thank you for watching. We've got plenty more basketball highlights coming your way all January, February, and March. I'm Matthew Hatfield. We'll see you next week right here on the Cox Sports Report.
Hey, I'm Matthew Hatfield. Be sure to catch next week's Cox Sports Report for highlights of high school basketball action, including Kings Fork at Lake Taylor, and a whole lot more. You don't want to miss it. It's the Cox Sports Report.